victory is yours and to you be glorified father every battle that anyone is fighting here we stand as a body we stand at the church consigning your health receive victory maybe it's somebody in your house we release victory for you you will conquer that thing that is meant to kill you will not kill you it will strengthen you it will make you stronger it will make you bigger financial challenge you will have victory poverty will not rule over your life in the name of jesus christ we shall have victory over our parents over our children over our businesses over every demonic attack because victory belongs to god and who can stand against the lord no one can thank you father we pray this in jesus name you may be seated in god's presence tell the person close to you say this is the month of new beginning if you have failed before it's another opportunity god is a giver of new opportunities some people here right here you have uh you have second chance third chance fourth chance tenth chance as long as you are alive go continue to give you opportunity but you see all all the battles you are going through one thing i wanted to say i want you to understand is that the bible says that the, the horse is set for battle but the lord gives the victory by strength shall no one prevail i want to share with you this morning what i call the place of favor in the new beginning the place of divine favor and i want to read luke chapter 2 and verse 52 Luke, Luke chapter, chapter 2, 2, verse 52. It says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and status, and in favor with God and men. The place of favor in new beginning last week i shared with you that you are not here by mistake before your mother conceived you god knows who you, <laughs> you may be a drunkard but before your mother conceived you he knows you. no matter who you are before even your parents in fact we look at the scriptures that he even know our matrix our design, our make. He knows what we can endure and what we cannot. So we know that we, 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 we are coming out from God. We are coming out from God. Because we are made in His image. And only in God can we survive. So the Lord shared with me, I mean speak to me, that I should talk to us today about the place of favor in the new beginning if you don't experience favor you will not go to you will not achieve what god wants you to achieve hard work is important but if only hard work is what you do you will never fulfill your destiny you need favor tell your neighbor say you need favor this is the lord jesus i'm going to begin with him and i'm going to end with him the bible says and jesus increased in wisdom he increased in statue that means physically all right he grew then he also he increased in favor with the lord i would have just stayed there would have just stayed there and say okay at least we need favor from god now god is saying that not only me jesus who is the son of god jesus who is god need favor of man Everybody in life needs somebody. And until that man 
has favor upon you, he cannot help you. There's nobody here who does not need helper. I need a helper. I pray this almost throughout as God speak to me. I say, God, I need favor. If you receive favor with God, you need favor with man. Somebody, I've had so many of you saying sometimes, you say, I don't need him. Let him keep his money. I don't need him. It's only God that I need. Yes, you need God, but you need man. Somebody is not hearing me. And only God can give you favor with man. Your step to victory is between you a man god has shown you favor and you need god to link you with helper of destiny that will take you to where god has asked you to be what you are born to be cannot be attained until you meet with the man that will take you there and what that will bring that man is called favor somebody say favor i know i has called me to preach I know that God has called me. I'm designed to do that. But I can't preach without a man. Somebody must lift up my hand. Somebody will show me the way. Somebody need to invite me. Somebody need to say, come and share. Today somebody let the service. Somebody pray. Alright? If, if there's no platform, they will not be here. Are we together here? They will not be here. The choir sang today. It was the pastor who led the, the song. There are times there is not the pastor. There are times that some of you will lead praises here. The pastor asks you lead it. He is. He needs favor with him. To give you opportunity and platform. To exercise what God has asked you to be. I hear what I'm talking about. You are running business. And I hear a lot of you very proud. I'll show you. That you are saying I don't need him. Let him perish with his money. That is your favor. Jesus needs man's favor. He went to the temple. I'll show you. It's the last scripture we are going to read. He went there and they gave him the tablet. Somebody gave him. The temple he entered. Somebody is the pastor. He needed him. If not, you will lock the place. You need God first. But when you need, you receive God. You need man. If you are working in the office, people handle your files. Do you know that sometimes you can abuse the messenger, but he's the one that will carry the file to the boss? Have you heard of files missing? The ogre will say, bring the file! Me, I've been to local government. I know what they do. The chairman will say, pay him. There was a time we did work with higher height, and we did some work for the local government, and then the local government order, pay him now, pay him. They say, yes sir, yes sir. Where is the, 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 the whatever they worked it? They say, pay him. He say, okay, no problem. Today! By one week, they have not paid. So I call one of them. I say, what happened? He said, once we get that, this local government ways. That even when he told you, he was not serious. But it may not be true. Somebody is holding the paper. He could even be a messenger. Because your helper may not be a great man. You need favor between before the great, before the small. Somebody lift up your hand and say favor. I want to get to where God has asked me to be. I want to fulfill my destiny. And every man that is located in every place that I need his favor, I release it right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is not hearing me. I say in the name of Jesus. I need favor. Jesus needed it. You cannot be more spiritual than Jesus. He grew in wisdom. In stature. That means he grew in his knowledge of God. He grew up physically. But he also grew in favor with the Lord. Very important. And then with men. Why am I talking about men? Because many of us push away our favor. We push away our favor. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs 13. We are talking about new beginning this month. And we are looking forward for higher heights. If we, if we walk in divine favor, things will work. Hard work is important. But hard work without the Lord is useless. 
if you are not connected to God, you will not be able to experience this favor. Look, ch Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15. Proverbs 13, 15. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. Good understanding gains favor. But the way of the way of the unfaithful is hard. Good understanding brings favor. Understanding brings favor. Lack of understanding brings suffering. Understand who you are. That's one of the ways to get favor. Understand what you can do. Understanding brings favor. The scriptures here says, good understanding gains favor. If you have good understanding, have you seen a man diligent in his work? He shall sit with kings. Why? Because the man has understanding of what he's doing. You cannot be a fool and experience favor. No, fools don't understand favor. They don't experience favor. But when you have an understanding, so you need to commit your time to have understanding in the place that God has called you. I told you, as everybody has his calling. Even as ministers, pastors, you can have 10 pastors. Each pastor has his calling. I'm called to teach. So I need to understand what I'm called for. That's why last week, I told us that you are not here by mistake. I tell you, you are not here by mistake at all. Nobody is here by mistake. There is a reason why God brought you here. That's why I said you need favor of the great and the small. Because some ways to the great, a small person will carry you. Oh my God. Samson, the greatest, the strongest man on earth, messed it up. His eyes were plucked. His ears were caught. And Chidomish, Suman, Chidomish, everywhere. He can't, he can't see. What did he do? He came to the place and there was row everywhere. They were waiting to see how they can kill him. They were laughing at him. Then he looked at a small boy. He called him and said, please take me to the place where I can rest my hand. He needed the favor of a small boy. They are not, they, when you see people as object of your favor, you treat them differently. Understanding gains favor. If you walk without understanding, you will dwell among the dead. That's what the scripture says in Proverbs. Anyone who walks in the congregation of, the, of, the, of, 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 of fools will die, will walk in the company of the dead. You can imagine Samson, as strong as he has, but he has no eyes. He needed a man that would guide him. And he was not a big man. He knew the child is innocent. The child does not do anything. And do you know that child will even die in that place? But yet he needed him to fulfill the purpose of God's life. What I need is favor. Favor means that God is giving you what you don't deserve, what you don't work for. If you can work for it, it's no longer favor. Yes, but you, there's work that you must do to attract you to that place. But that favor is not your wisdom. It is God who gives to you. When you have favor with God, one of the things God will do is that he will show you favor with man. Don't you ever say, I don't need a man. I've had several of us very proud. I don't need anybody. Men is she to kuna. In one and chaman thing. Chin is a bang al jana. Banaso. You are a fool. God may not need you, but God will need a man. Do you see what he said? Give and he shall be given back to you. What? Good major. Press down. Shaking together. Rolling over. Shall what? Men. Give unto your bosom. We are looking forward for higher heights. You know, as I was praying, I said, God, one of the prayers I was praying, I said, God, I need millions for this program. How can I get? I said, Lord, just give me favor. Because one man can settle that bill.
Like I said, humility is the way to favor. Psalms 3 verse 33. Psalms I'm right there. Psalms number three. Just hope that I'm right. I'm not sure. Because God said, He opposed the proud, but He give grace to the humble. Let's get that scripture off. I'm not sure. I get that right. But the scriptures I wanted to say says that humility brings favor. Humility brings favor to us. So, like I said, that 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 attitude. That, 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 that you feel that you can do without anybody it's time for you to change because sometimes god can use a man you don't like to favor you are we together i say what god can what you are not here with me i say god can what the man you don't like god can use him to bring favor upon your life that was supposed to be proverb, not not Psalms. Proverb thirty-three, Proverb chapter three, Proverb chapter three. Where is that? Verse thirty-three said, "The house of the Lord is on." He said, "The cause of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but He blesses the home of the just. Surely He is condescending and give grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame." shall be the legacy of fools he give grace verse 34 he give grace to the humble he gives favor to the humble somebody say amen i say somebody say amen so we have understanding we have humility and let me link them up and then I'll, I'll hit the point. We have understanding, we have humility. If you know what God has called you to achieve in life, all right? You know what God has called you to achieve in life? You need to be humble. Because one thing with knowledge, the Bible says that knowledge proves up. Knowledge makes you proud. When you think you know something, you become proud about it. But when you're humble, even when you know, you will experience favor. Oh, I know how to sing. Then the only thing you do is criticize those who don't sing well. Because you think you know better than them. It will not give you favor. I need favor. I didn't define favor for you because I believe everybody knows favor. Favor is when your phone rings and that, that call is the answer to your challenge. Favor is in the office when they are planning evil against you. Then somebody else will come out and say, hey, this is what is happening. Please do this and do that. Favor. It's what we need at this moment. Look at what... What happened to Esther? Esther chapter 4. Give me chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. From verse 1. You know, in chapter 5, verse, is this chapter 4? This is Mordecai learning all that had happened. He tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went into the midst of the city. He cried with a loud voice and went to Esther and spoke to Esther and told Esther that, look, we are all about to die. All of us were about to die. He said, until you do something, Esther said, I'm not doing anything. Why is she not doing anything? She said, look, if I get to the king, I will be killed. And he said, Esther, don't you ever think 
that you got to such a place for, a, for, for, for yourself. You are in that place for such a time as this. Because that is what God does. When God favors you, His work, when you obtain favor from God, He places people in places where you will need help. And so Mordecai spoke to her. By the way, you didn't see our children. About 32, three of them, they have gone for a conference in Joyce. They're enjoying themselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. Favor. So Esther was restraining and when Mordecai spoke to her, Mordecai, she told Mordecai, he said, go and pray for me for three days. I need to meet the king for this. The enemy is in the palace. And the king has favored the enemy. When the king favored your enemy, you are in perpetual problem. You need somebody close to the king. A man. Listen to me. You need what? A man. Chapter 5 and verse 1. Madakai. Chapter 5, please. Give me chapter 5. Of the same Esther. And verse 1. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robe. And stood in the inner court of the king's palace. Across from the king's house. While the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house. Facing the entrance of the house. Now this is what happened. Let me tell you. She dressed. Said dress. I think here. Said dress. Are you with me here? Do you really need favor? I said dress. For the fact that you need favor. Does not mean that you should misbehave. There are things you need to do. This woman dressed well. You are going to see the chairman and you come from farm and move straight to the office. It will not work. Somebody say you be you be addressed the way you dress. You have your bathroom slippers and say, I, God will give me a favor no matter what is. No, no, no. There are things to be done. Esther dressed in her royal apparel, beautiful, and positioned herself. She went to his house. Because the, the throne is over there. And she went to his house where he can see her from a distance. Put on her perfume and dress well. And move on to see the king. The Bible says in verse 2. Go to verse 2. The Bible says in verse 2. And so it was when the king saw King Esther standing in the court. That she found favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went and touched, because you have to touch it to attack the favor. The favor is there, but you need to do something. Touch it. May you touch favor. A golden scepter be released to you by the word of God. Touch it tonight. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear that amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Many of you, you are here, you are still foreigners to me. I don't need to lay my hands upon you. When I speak the word, it happens. Believe it. A lot of people believe in hard work. I do. But hard work alone will not take you anywhere. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. But victory comes from God. You must prepare for battle. You must prepare for battle. But I want you to know that your strength cannot give you the victory. There are people that are doing hard work. But you, you know it. There are some people you grow up together. You have the same degree, but they are higher than you. The difference is, they have received favor you have not seen. And it is God who gives that favor. He connects you with people. Esther experienced that favor for the sake of our people. She had understand it. You know, initially, that's why I talk about understanding. She thought she was there, the wife, the, the daughter of an orphan. She found herself in the king's palace. And she was enjoying. Her people were dying. She didn't know. That's how many of us are today. 
in this country, many people are in government and they forgot about us. They forgot that God placed them there for such a time as this. They needed to talk. They did not talk. People are being killed. They didn't talk. They are in that place. They didn't talk. People are as loud as they didn't talk. But remember when they hit Abuja, they started talking. Because what you think is far will come close. So if you need to talk, you need to talk. If God bless you in a place so that you can defend people, do it. Esther found favor because she had an understanding of who she was. Mordecai talked to her and said, and say, Esther, go and tell her that she should know. She should not think that because she's in the palace, she'll be safe. Is she aware that she's in this place for such a time? Her eyes open, poop, and she said, wow. So God brought me here for this. He said, it's a difficult task. Fast for me. On the third day, she dressed up. She was looking for favor. Tell the person close who said, dressed up. She was looking for favor. You are going to the market, dressed up for the market. You are going to farm, dressed up for the farm. Do it well. Whatever you, want, you find your hand to do, do it with your heart. She knew that in this time, I'm sure she wear the dress she may have never seen before. If you read Esther, you hear of one of the eunuchs that Esther will always go and find out from him. That, that woman was a completely wise woman. Even when the contest was to be done, she went to the man, the eunuch that was staying with the king for long, and asked him, what does the king want? And the Bible says she did according to what the eunuch spoke to her. So I'm sure in, on this day, he was the one who was carrying the message from, from Mordecai to Esther, Mordecai. So he said, what do I do? He said, now you need to dress. Where is that cloth? Put it on. Is it day of favor? I tell you, this thing I'm telling you is prophetic. If you key into it, you begin to experience favor that you never imagined before. It's going to happen. It's like it's only this person that says amen. May it happen to you. <laughs> Psalms 102. Psalms 102. Are you there? If you are, I want everybody to open because sometimes you feel maybe the scripture is not there. 102. Thank you, Jesus. It's the time of my favor. I enter into my favor in the name of Jesus Christ. It is my time of favor. It is my season of favor. It is my moment of favor. I walk into my favor in the name of Jesus. It is time of my favor. It is time of my favor. Because the time to favor Israel has come. The time to favor Israel has come. The time to favor Israel has come. You arise, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. Zion is Ayuba. Are you hearing what I'm talking about here? Go to verse 12. Let's start from verse 12 and then we come back here. We'll read verse 13. He said, But you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations then verse 13 says you will arise and have mercy on zion for the time to favor her yes the said time has come go to verse 14 go to verse 14 
For your servant's sake, take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. Dust means your nothingness. Dust means your lowest point. Verse 12, verse 13 speaks of mercy. Mercy means that you don't deserve it. What I don't deserve has come to me. I tell you, if favor were given to people that deserve it, it's no longer favor. Favor comes to people you don't expect. Favor, what is, when you talk about favoritism, it comes from favor. It means God jump a person. I don't want to show anybody, like God jump this seed and come to this seed. But this seed looks better than this seed. Then this seed will turn and look at this person and say, why did God favor her? She didn't have the intelligence. She didn't go to that school. But why is she always blessed? It's called favor. And the Bible said here that you will arise and have mercy on rescue force. For the time to favor rescue force has come. And the set time has come. Stand over your feet. I'm, I'm going to read two scriptures more. But I want to pause here. You are going to call your name. And say my season has come. This is my set time. Lift up your hands and say father. Say father. Thank you for your mercy. It is my time. For favor. My set time has come. According to your word. Bring favor upon my life. Bring favor in my business. Bring favor in the name of the right man bring him to my life i have found favor with you show me favor with man in the name of jesus sit down on your seat i don't know if i've said something to somebody here your set time has come yes that connection will connect you prophetically i'm speaking to you that connection will connect you wherever the man that is your helper is from the north to the south from east to west i stand on this altar by the reason of the calling that God has put upon my life, I call forth your favor in the name of Jesus. Then locate you wherever you are, that man that God has positioned in the right places to lift you up to your place of dominion. I pray for you right now that that man will locate you in the name of Jesus. I want to pray one prayer for those that people don't like you in your place of office. Because of this assignment, I turn their heart that the haters will become your lovers in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive in Jesus mighty name. You may be seated. So it is my time. It is my season. It is my set time. When is the set time? Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. Give me new, give me NIV. Second Corinthians if you have it. But put the NIV, put the scripture first. Then you can look for your NIV. He said, we are workmen of God. We are workers together with God. That's what Paul spoke. He said, as God's co-workers, we ought you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse, verse 2. He said, for he says, in the time of my favor, I had you. In my, in my time of favor, I had you. In the day of salvation, I what? I, no, I didn't hear you. Are you seeing that? I what? He said, for I, I tell you now is what? Is the time of what? God's favor. Now. He said the set time has come. When is the set time? Now. So God, I need favor now. Not tomorrow. It's not a tomorrow prayer. Connect me with my helper. Connect me with the person that will favor me. If Jesus grows in favor with God and man, I need that man. Whatever is blocking that man from your face, I remove that hindrance. Yes, whoever that is supposed to be your helper, but somebody has gossiped you in this place, I pray that that hatred will turn to love in the name of Jesus Christ. May your helper locate you. 
I said, may your help allocate you. The Bible says, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. When the time of favor comes, you pray prayer, God answer those prayers. That is why I ask you to pray those prayers today. That's why we pray victory belongs to God. If you are basing on your, see, how much is your salary, my brother? How much will you be able to build that house without salary? You can't. How much do they give you? If God show you favor, the man will love you. Let me show you something that happened to me. I was very shocked. One day I was sitting in the... You know, I just prayed and then I was here. And then one day, Lukatula just told me, Man of God, are you, are you around? He says, I said, we just arrived in the country. I'm coming. I said, okay, you can come. He came. And I saw him with the bishop. I said this building was incomplete at that time. And I was the, the office incomplete. I, I sat him, I sat him down and he was interpreting. I said, if you come alone at midnight, I welcome you. But this man you brought, I don't know him. I don't have money to give him. Why will you bring the man? I said, that's not right. If you have told me you are bringing this man, I will not allow you to come. But God didn't allow him to do that. You remember that time the man came? We had the program, he left. Then the man called me and said, Pastor, I want to invite you to my country. I want to invite you to my country. I said, okay. How much was the transportation at that time? It was almost 500,000. I think how? I was sitting in Cannes and I saw his message. He said, I send you a message in your email. I checked, it was a ticket for the next day to travel. The next day, it was on Monday, the next day on Tuesday to travel to DRC Congo with a ticket. Then I, just after that meeting, that meeting, I just closed. The moment we closed from the rally, I took a, a vehicle, I think it was Jodem, that took me to the airport, to, the, to, the, to Abuja. The next day, I fly to DRC Congo. He took me to a meeting. I preached in the leaders' meeting. Then he took me to another big meeting. I preached like two days on three days. I preached on, because I arrived on Thursday, I preached that th Thursday night. So I preached Friday in the morning, the leaders in the evening, I preached. I, on Saturday, the, the rain was too much. I couldn't preach. On, uh, on Saturday, I preached. And then on Sunday, I preached. On Monday, I was on my way back to Nigeria. It was four days. How much did they give me? They give me equivalent for the equivalent of 800,000 naira four days of preaching and I asked myself how much salary is that one it is called favor the time for to favor you has come you know what he told me he said pastor I would have given you more I remember I wanted to, do, to come with mama but I can't I wanted to give her the money for the ticket but I don't have but I want you to take this Almost, almost 2,000 or over 2,000 US dollars. He said, take this and go home. That was when we laid the foundation of that house. You are waiting for your hard work. What you need is that man that God has designed before you are born and has equipped him with money. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, my money is in somebody's hand. Father, whoever that man is, today I command that that favor will locate him now. As I stand in this place, I decree that as favor locate, my resources will come. Somebody shout, Amen. Sit down. This is my time of favor. Today is the day of God's favor. Can you imagine that? I was calculating the money of these speakers that will be coming. How much is it? I calculated to almost like 5,000 US dollars. Each dollar is 700,000. Let me leave it there. I know it's above. Let me say 700,000. 1,700,000 naira. You put two, it's 1,400. So if you have five times 700, how many million is that? 3.5 million. We don't have. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have. But tomorrow they will start buying their ticket. It's called favor. When you ask a man of God to come to a place, you ask to send me a ticket. But this ones, they are willing to come. 
Matthias said, Pastor, as long as I've been here, I want to come. He has bought his ticket already. He's already on his way coming. We don't have the money, but we have what is called favor. May God give you favor. Because it is your season. It is your time. Let me show you one scripture. Give me Isaiah 61. See what Jesus did. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Isaiah 61. Look at what he said. The spirit of the Lord, sovereign Lord is what? It's on me. We are not together. It's what? It, those people behind. It's what? On me. He said because he has what? The Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Go to verse 2. I'm actually going to verse 3. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of God's vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Now listen, stay in verse 2. Stay in verse 2. That's where I'm going, I'm sure. He said, look at this scripture very well. He said what? Number one to what? To proclaim. I'm not hearing you. Number one. And what? The vengeance of our God. And to comfort those who mourn. So three things in this scripture. He will bring favor and you bring judgment. That's what he said. Go to Luke chapter. Don't just have this in your mind. Go to Luke chapter 4 and give me verse 18. Actually, I'm going to verse 19. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord God, you see, it's the same thing. The spirit of the Lord God, in me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed. Verse 19. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, listen to me. The next verse, what did he say? Give me verse 20. What did he say, verse 20? Then he rolled up the stroll, give it back to the attendant and sat down. Okay. Go back to 61 and verse 2. Go back to 61 and verse 2. I want to show you something. Very exciting. Very powerful. Look at what it says. To proclaim the year of, God, of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Now I want you to have this in your mind. The day of God's favor, the year of vengeance. Okay? God is going to have vengeance. Go to verse, go to look. Have you gotten this? Is it okay? Two things I want to pick here. God's favor and what? And vengeance. Now, there are two edges word. But go to go back to Luke, Luke chapter 4 and verse 19. Look at that scripture. He's quoting the same verse. Verse 2, verse 19, verse 19. He said, They proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he closed the book. He did not talk about the vengeance. He was quoting scripture, but he stopped on the way. The scripture says is the year of God, God's favor and the day of God's favor and the year of God's vengeance. But when he reached favor, he closed the book and he said, this book is fulfilled in your hearing today. It's not time for vengeance. It's time for favor. If something is condemning you, your spirit is not from the spirit of God. Because there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not an object of vengeance. You are an object of favor. Somebody is not hearing what I'm talking about. I said that you are not an object of cause. The cause of your forefathers cannot follow you because you are an object of favor. By the power of the scriptures, you are commanded to walk in divine favor because it is your time for favor, the season of your favor. It is not time for vengeance, it is time for favor. That is why I will not die before my time. That is why you will not enter the wrong vehicle and you will not have an accident because it is your time for favor. That is why God will not allow wickedness to prevail over your life. That is why you cannot be kidnapped because it is your season of divine favor. That is why you will not be attacked. That's why you, they will not kill you. That's why your business will not crumble. God will connect you with a man that is supposed to lift you to the place of your promise. Because it is not time of vengeance. It is time for favor. Stand up on your feet. It is my season. It is my season of favor. 
Jesus closed the book. He did not want to read vengeance. If Jesus had read that vengeance, it would begin to happen. Do you know something? Now listen to me. Do you know that between between favor, you see that arm and the day of vengeance is more than 200 years. It's more. We are enjoying favor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't enjoy the favor, maybe you will come and enjoy the vengeance. But those who enjoy the favor cannot enjoy the vengeance. That is why when Jesus came, it's a season. Many people will say, why is God not punishing people? Why is God not? We are in the time of favor. That is why you should not be surprised when God favors somebody. And that somebody is me. You begin to ask, why should he favor me? There is no answer to that favor. Because I tell you, favoritism, what is favoritism is when you like somebody more than somebody else. And if God favor me, it is, his, it is between you and him. I don't know why. Because I know there is one thing. If he has favored Jesus, I am in Jesus. And Jesus said, it is the day of the, of the favor of God. It's the time. Paul said, now is the acceptable time. When you call him, he will answer. Yes, when you call him, he will what? He will answer. How God will lift up people from place of nothingness and take them to the place of greatness. Greatness is called favor. <laughs> one day my children were seeing some of my friends that we grew up together and they were telling me, this one, you told me, is it this one that is, was your friend? I said, yes. How God lift up people? But you need to have an understanding and you need to be humble. You need to have an understanding of where you are going so that you can meet the people that God has assigned for you because your lifting is in the place of your assignment. If you don't stay where God has called you, you will miss your helpers of destiny. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in what? Favor. With who? With the Lord and with men. Father, today I thank you for receiving this word. Let the atmosphere of favor surround me. I come against the evil scent that removes around you that hatred that people, the moment they see you, there's a spell that's been cast in your life. They don't want to help you. People who have promised you things, they fail because something is working around your life. I command that that yoke, I command that that, that, that spell over your life is broken right now and i decree in the name of jesus let that favor begin to come upon you let that light begin to come upon you from this moment begin to experience divine favor upon your life begin to experience divine favor upon your life let people in your office begin to realize that there's a special hand over your life in the name of jesus what took Joseph from prison to the palace was his understanding of the vision that God has given to him. Understanding of his, of his gift. He had the understanding that yes, I have the gift of interpretation. And that gift kicked him into the king's palace. And he had favor and they lift him from prison to the palace. I am praying, I'm looking forward to God's miracle upon your life. I am beginning to feel that somebody here is about to receive an appointment that you have been working for, you have been waiting for. Somebody is about to receive a favor, not because of your education, not because of what you have done. Yes, you have done favor to somebody before. They have forgotten about you. But prophetically, I am speaking to somebody here. Yes, God is about to distinguish a man in this church. I see a shift from where you are to another place. I don't know who that man is, but I know if you feel your spirit, I want you to receive that word because it is yours. Somebody God is about to shift you to a place. Yes, you have been looking. You know the place, but you don't know how to get there. God is bringing a man upon your life that will take you to another place. In the name of Jesus, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. 
I speak by your word, Almighty God. I stand on this altar speaking your word. And I pray that from this moment, my people shall not just walk by hard work. They have toil. Father, I pray and I intercede for every member of this church who have been toiling. They have toiled. I'm a witness, oh God. They have toiled. They have worked. They have labored. They have suffered. Almighty God, do not treat them as people who just walk. I ask because you bring this word to us today. Father, let the cloud, let the cloud of this honor, let the garment of this honor begin to tear away from their life. And I pray for favor from this moment. What you cannot do. Somebody want to buy something. You know the price, but you don't have the money. You needed it desperately. It looks like a land. It looks like a house. It looks like a business. I don't know what it is, but somebody want to buy something. You have done the pricing, but it looks as if you don't have the phone. And as if you are going to miss it. I decree right now, Father, open the heavens concerning that man. You have not told me the name of that man. But Lord, I pray in this church, open the heavens. Do a surprise. Let the man know that you are God. Let the man know that you are God. Let the man know that you are God. Let the man know that God, you can open the heavens. We can do things where there seems to be no way. Open the way, oh God. Open the way, oh God. So that you can establish that man. about to stop because I feel God want to do something here in this church can I have the choir you are sitting here so that you can sing can you give me a song let's, let's just take this to another level God is about to bring favor to people's life suffering is over I say suffering is over I say suffering yes you have labored but it's time for God there's a golden scepter hey a golden that you are supposed to touch God has released a golden scepter over your life it's time to touch it in your spirit in your spirit it's time to touch the golden scepter you don't touch it by looking at me you touch it by praying touch that place a golden scepter go on you touch that favor may your business touch the favor in the name of Jesus your time has come my time has come my season has come my moment has come for divine favor in the name of Jesus
Esther chapter 9. Esther chapter 9 and verse 1. Esther chapter 9 verse 1. I'll take that prayer. There's a shift that is coming as a result of God's favor. I tell you, from this moment, don't underrate any man. Don't look down on anybody. Anybody can be anyone in your life. The Bible said on the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adam, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. That day was meant for the killing of all the Jews. But the Bible says on this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. But now the tables were turned. And the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. You didn't see that scripture. On the day that they were meant to be killed, the table turned. God is about to turn your table. Amen. In the New King James, it says the opposite happened. This one said the table turned from poverty to wealth. The table turned from killing to life. The table turned. Your table is about to turn. Amen. The enemies thought it was a day to kill them, but the opposite happened. Can you go to God in prayer that the Jews had hoped to overcome? I mean that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overcome them. But the, the opposite occurred. In that day, God turned the story. Turn my story. Turn my story. Ah, you don't understand the prayer. Every sickness that is meant to kill me will not kill me. Because God is turning the story. The table is about to turn. The table is turning. The table is turning. Yes, the table is turning. The table is turning. The table is turning. In the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy has planned against you and your family, the table has turned. The table has turned. 21st day, in the name of Jesus, of the month of, of, of August, God has turned the table. Every witchcraft plan and oppression over your life, God has turned the table. Every wickedness over your life, God has turned the table because of His mercy, because of His grace. God has turned the table in the name of Jesus. God has turned the table. Maliko Labakashi, your struggle has been paid off. Your struggle has been paid off. God has turned the table. It was me, Makasheke, Lobo Salamabashi, Makasheke, Bolivakaria. Baba Baba Bashi, Lobo Kose, Mamanda Leba Kose, Leba Baba Bashi, Makasheke, Baba 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 Bashi, Lobo Kose Kabaliba, Baba 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 Bashi, Lema Mamanda Le. God has turned the table in the name of Jesus. Even in this nation, even in this country, God has turned the table. Yes, God has turned the table in this country. He has turned the table. My little glory above the rest. On the day that God was here to kill us, God has turned the table. My little son of a mercy. My God said, Hey, little mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leba Babanshe. Listen to me now. It may be the last prayer point, and I want you to pray. Every word in the Bible, I don't take it for granted. Even if it is, is Jesus said, not a dot will come to pass, will pass away. This world will pass away, not a dot. So even if it's a comma, it's important in the Bible. Look at what it says. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped. You see, hope is an expectation the expectation of the wicked shall perish I say it shall perish on this day the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them then the Bible say but now now what happened the table you are going to look for somebody who will pray with you. This prayer is more than your power. Look for somebody very fast who you know that can pray for you. All these people in the as pastors, I don't want. Okay, just pray. You can have don't, don't be more than three. Look for somebody that can pray for you. Don't take this prayer for granted. Now you will sing the song, but just give me time. Let me just speak. Give me some little time. Listen to me. 
but now the table turned. What is your prayer? Lord, turn the table. As we are holding our hands, turn the sickness to wealth, to, to healings. Turn the poverty to wealth. Bring divine favor. Those who wish to see your downfall, let them see you rising. Turn the table, oh God. Turn the table for my brother. Turn the table for my sister. Hold your two hands. Hold the two hands. Hold the two hands. Hold the two hands. My head has come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My season is come. 